Yo, welcome to the channel. So this project is a massive, massive kitchen extension that you've not seen any part of it because it's kind of been a bit of a mystery. Now, the lads have been building this while we've been over on various different sites and stuff like that trying to sort this out. So today I have been clearing out some of the old, what we call dead wood in the electrical industry. Um, so we're going to get rid of that which is gone and I'm going to explain all the few little bits and bobs that I've found. Um, also we're going to get on with some first fix electrics and also marking out. So. That being said, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, the link is in the corner down here. Make sure you turn that on. Don't do anything else. Just make sure you turn it on. Do it right now. Ready? Three, two, one. Press it. Done. Thank you very much. Right, so I'm going to go through the actual job and let's go and have a little look a little bit closer in what we've got to do. So where I'm standing now used to be the back garden and this all this massive giant steel has been put in. There's a steel in the floor and all the rest of it, but no one needs to know about that. That's a lot of big, big faff and stuff. So in here, we have got some huge bifolds which have gone in, so they've already been installed, which is nice because usually we have to wait an absolute lifetime for them to be sorted. But on this job, it's nice to actually have it weather tight pretty much from day one, which is great for me. Um, so this is my first day on this particular site. Um, so what we've had to do is clear out a lot of the electrics, the, the old stuff, the DIY disasters which has happened so we've got rid of a load of those so i'll quickly uh, show you some of those bits because they are interesting should i say okay so we've got some of the pile that we've you know sort of collected through so we've got bits and bobs like this where we've got joints on joints on joints so this one was what was there was an old doorway here um so doorway here light switch but then the light switch was within within from there so it was joined in that bit then came up over the door frame and then it was onto the light switch, which is rosy. Loads of tape joints, so there was, you can see there was a socket down there, which is that chrome one, which is now smashed to pieces. So also that fed the socket the other side, so that's all gone now. Um, random wires through the walls, which I presume on the other side there is wall lights, but I can't get to that because it's absolutely full of belongings. Fine, not a problem, we'll get all those sorted. Um, so the, so see here, so this is where one of the center lights was, so that was hanging down, but that had several joints just on that bit. Uh, see if I can find some of those bits. So you see here, so we've got a joint on there and that little cable there, another joint on the end of, the, end of that one, so that is what was up here. Then the ring was lost in amongst a load of other stuff. So this is what Shawnee had actually took down. It was all bagged up. So we've got little bits and bobs like that. So as you can see, that is what sort of standard we were up against. So as you can gather, it's probably the best thing for me to possibly do is rewire the whole house. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, that's a bit extreme. It's just the back. Now, there is a reason behind that. So we've already done a garage conversion um, of good year ago now. So I did a garage conversion and then I ascertained that the actual wiring in the actual main part of the house, ignoring all this, is actually really, really poor. So we kind of made a decision there because here we've got this all to do. So it's a good quarter of the house is all going to be brand new. Also on this site, we are doing a garage, no, loft conversion, sorry. Um, so that being said, there's only the literal midsection and the lounge left in the original state. So we decided actually, do you know what? We're gonna rewire the whole property and make it a much safer house for the future. Cause this is gonna be their forever home. So this is why we decided to do it. Now, the really, really cool thing about what we're doing in this particular rewire is that we're gonna be using Doncaster Cable's brand new cable, the Earthshore. Now I'm gonna bring you in, I'm gonna show you what exactly that's all about. So this is Doncaster Cable's brand new Earthshore. Now the really, really cool thing about this is that it, the actual earth sleeving is built into the actual cable itself, which will not only save you time, it'll give you a better finish, it's nice and neat, and you haven't got to keep carrying around scraps and scraps of earth sleeving. So let's show you what it looks like inside. So this is a bit that I've already stripped out. Now, as you can clearly see, you've got the earth sleeving is completely and utterly taken care of. Now, stripping wise is we've just got these Nipex strippers. It couldn't really be any simpler. 
it's just quick, easy, nice to install. The good thing about Doncaster cables I find is that actually it's more malleable than some of the other brands which we won't talk about right now. Um, but yeah, it's not sponsored by them, it is just something that we have decided to, uh, to go with and we're going to rewire the whole house in it, so there you go. So basic layout is we've got uh, units all the way run around here, we've got a steel that's going to be taken into, into place there. Runs down, we've got fridge freezer, freestanding over that bit. We've got the microwave oven just to the other side of that steel. Uh, hob there, and it runs around worktops. Sorry, dishwasher just, just here. Um, we've got under cabs because there's gonna be some wall units along there and then various different points. So radiator behind you, one there, one there, and one over that side. And that's pretty much it. So, right, I'm gonna show you how we're going to go about getting this ring sorted. Let's get this smashed out. So because this is a thermalite block, we're going to use the DeWalt stapler directly into the thermalite. It holds really, really nice and tight. And we're going to run the cables on the prescribed zone. So we've got 150 mil down from the top surface, and then we're going to run down in a straight line, straight to the extractor fan, which is what I'm doing right now. So we're going to start forming the cable, making sure the radius is not too tight to drop down in a straight line ready for the extractor fan itself. So what I now do is generally coil the cables up so I know what sort of height it needs to come out at. So when Sean comes and does all the boarding, he knows where I want it to be. So just to the right of the steels now is where the tower unit is going to be, where I'm going to mount all my isolators for the hob, the oven, the extractor fan and so on. As I've mentioned before, we're using the Earthshore cable, it really is a pleasure to use. Now it's mounted on a Rumpatec cable drum runner, which I'm going to call it, which makes light work of running cables. Now what you can see now is I'm feeding the cable behind a bit of a void. Now, without that void, it would have been an absolute nightmare to get the cables through into the new extension, just purely because of the amount of steels that's fitted. So what I'm doing now is concentrating on getting the ring sorted. Now, we're gonna put a ring main in for this rear section completely. So it's gonna take in consideration the actual extension, the open plan kitchen dining area, and also there is a storeroom that it's gonna be taken care of. I find the ring is going to be a much better fit for the size of the extension. So once again we're going to use the DeWalt stapler to staple down across that roof line and then down to the first socket and go and using all the prescribed zones we're going to be following that through to make sure we can get all the cables ran in this area because I'm trying to avoid drilling through any of the roof structure what we've got for the extension. So here we're going to have the dishwasher feed, so what I generally do with these is put the feed inside the unit underneath the sink because as we all know the dishwashers are either to the left or to the right of the sink unit. I generally leave the cables fairly long because then that gives me more options for the location for the isolator um, because Quite often nowadays we'll have things like the, the KUKA instant boil tap which takes up an absolute ton of space. You may have noticed I haven't fitted any back boxes just yet and there's a big reason for that is because I haven't got enough. So they're on their way, they are to be delivered and I will be fitting those at a later date. So let's just wrap these cables up as usual in a little pigtail. Okay, so what we've got now is essentially an actual plan, which is great. So just been through with a client, um, which is brilliant because you don't normally get a detailed scale drawing of where they want everything, which is fantastic. So just gone through that, which is brilliant. Um, so I'm just starting to run all my cables through. So in that micro oven over here, I'm gonna bring all my isolators and stuff back down to there um, for like the extractor fan and the hob and all that lot. So that's all neat and done dusted. Now I will mount the back boxes on, um, but until I know, I've just got a little bit more measurements of actually where to, to, to site those, um, which is brilliant. So we're gonna put a ring in here for this that's gonna take care of the rear extension bit here. 
Now, you could do a couple of radials, not a problem, um, but I'm gonna do it as a ring. I tend to find it works better for me uh, for the kitchen. The rest of the rooms will all be on radials as, as, as I go on. Um, now, the, there is sockets underneath the stairs, so let's move you around here. So now on the plan, there is sockets that are going to be underneath the stairs. Now this stairs actually kicks down and goes down that way, uh, and they don't want to use like waste the space as such. So the sockets there, there's a socket on this wall just to my left, and down here there is a long storage room. This entrance here is an actual big storage room, so there's various different sockets, but it's not being boarded or uh, skimmed out in there other than the ceiling. So. So that's fine, there's a TV going on the wall here, um, so that's okay, so we're going to take care of that. That is on this bit, so there's a TV here, Cat6 going in, we're also going to move the network uh, where it comes into the building, which is then going to go into that, st that storage room, um, and then I'm going to run another network switch and put networks in various different rooms as I go about rewiring, um, which is brilliant. So I've got now... To work my way down, so as you've seen, I've just got to that side there, was above the worktop there. I've then got to come up, back over there, and along this roof structure, uh, and then drop down for my TV. Um, there is a socket going on this side, this side, uh, and also a socket here for Christmas tree. There's the winter Christmas tree right here. That's where this bad boy's going. All right, so right, better get cracking. Continuing with the ring, we're going to drop that down to the socket and then we're going to go all the way across the top of the bifolds and clip directly to the wall plate. While doing this, it's important to try and keep a bit of tension on the cable as you're clipping to make sure it's all nice and straight and tight. Now it's a little bit tight here, so we're going old school using the hammer and clip method. I need to drill through this joist section now, so I'm going to use this angle drill attachment because I can't get the whole hog in there because it's so tight. I'm going to feed the cable through down to the TV socket as you can see. Now working back into the corner because down there eventually there's going to be a Christmas tree when all things get a bit festive. So once that's worked through we're going to go back to clipping the cables back down using the DeWalt stapler. Now it's time to drill through all these joists, making a nice clear run all the way through to continue the ring for the dining area section. So we're going to use the whole hog here because it is a much better job than using a hand drill as such. Running my holes through all the joists because later on we're going to be using these for also getting the down lights in. So here's the cable feed leading over, so just to the left of the ladders there's going to be another double socket just down there. So I'm going to pull plenty of cable through because the socket location hasn't been 100% dialed in yet. Then I'm going to go back and clip up ready for the additional socket to the right of me right now. Okay, so that's it for me today. Um, so Lou, kindly, as I've just been on the phone, uh, is doing a bit of sweeping up, which is an absolute winner. Um, so, so far I've got the ring ran in this room pretty much. Uh, we've got all that sorted, all the old stuff is gone. So just behind Lou, you've got the hallway where it runs down there. The consumer unit is actually right at the front of the building. So we'll just put um, the new ring tails to here because I need to open up the ceiling all the way down. I'm gonna run a channel down there so I can get that back. But obviously there's a lot of stuff going on down there that needs moving prior to that. Um, so yeah, so it's been a very, very busy day trying to go through all the plans. So it's a little bit slower, as you can imagine. Um, but yeah, that's it. So hopefully join me tomorrow where we'll get on with a bit more uh, cable installation and we'll go through some of that to do with the downlights and all the rest of it. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.